Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you this Wednesday night. Um, we can come together and join in the presence of the Lord. Um, like I said, Wednesday night. Thank God. The work week is almost through, except for those of us that are um, scheduled to um, work this weekend or back up somebody to cover for them this weekend. Um, but God is good. Um, grateful for my job. Thank you, Lord, for being my provider. I thank you, Lord, for um, allowing us to enter into your courts and into your gates today, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for your peace and your mercy also, Lord. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Um, if I could ask, um, if you want to share a testimony, feel free to share a testimony in the comments. Um, you know, if you want to have a praise report, feel free to share those in the comments as well. Be an encouragement to others. Um, and share those things with those around you, that the good things that God's doing in your life. Share those things, the goodness of God with those around us. In the name of Jesus, let them see how God is at work in each of our lives. Let them know about the miracles. Let them know about <clears throat> the healings that are taking place. Let them know about prayers that have been answered. Um, because God is on the throne. He is a miracle-working God. He is a prayer-answering God. And I thank him for that. I want to give Lord a <clears throat> sure just a quick praise report. Um, some of you might know or might not know that I go to get shots. I have macular degeneration in my right eye. The um, and I've been going to getting shots for the past few years, and they've extended it to every six months. And I just went back uh, last Friday, and you know. Um, they've allowed the to be extended every six months ago and it's like when i first started it was like every 12 weeks every six weeks or whatever but i just want to thank god that he's allowed it to stay at that six month time frame and i'm appreciative of that and while i was there i had the the doctor look because back in february i had a um an ulcer on my my other eye and so i had him check that out and he said there was no didn't, didn't look like there was any damage to that and he said it didn't look like there was any scarring from that so I just want to give the praise to the Lord I just want to thank God for that I thank him Lord for you know he had his hand upon this at all times I thank you that he has already told me that he has healed my eyes so I'm believing that in Jesus name and once again um, if you have a praise report if you want to share something that God has done in your life, you know, please feel free to put those in the comments. Um, like I said, be an encouragement to those around you, to family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers, and let them see that, that God is real. Let them see the good things that God's doing in your life. Amen. Praise God. Like I said, we've been talking about Christian character the past few weeks now. Um, I don't know how many weeks it's been exactly, but um, we're in Galatians 5 and 22 and 23, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So, this week we're going to go over um, talking about long suffering. But before we get into that, before we get into the scripture, before we get into any of these notes, if we could just give the Lord a few moments, um, if you want to just close your eyes, if you want to just lift your hands tonight and lift your hearts, lift your voices up to God in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come to you together in unity, Lord. We pray that we would be bound with cords of love that cannot be broken, that we have this chance to unite with you together in prayer by your spirit tonight, Father. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we come into this house, Lord, and we believe that you are the one true God, the one true God that sits upon the throne. Father, you, you are above all and over all. And I thank you tonight, Lord, that everything is under your feet. And I thank you, Jesus, that you rule and reign with such great power and authority, Lord, that there is nothing that happens that you are not aware of. There is nothing that is happening in our lives or around us, Father, that you have not allowed. There's nothing that is taking place, Father, that you have not put your limits on, Father, in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that um, <clears throat> your peace would have dominion in our hearts and minds tonight, Lord. And I pray that we would have those opportunities in our lives, Lord, to magnify you and exalt you. That the name of Jesus would be praised and magnified and lifted up and made holy in all the earth. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and we ask that you would allow the scales to fall from our eyes, Lord, that we would see through the eyes of God, that we would walk by faith and not by sight. And I pray that, that our eyes would become unveiled, O oh Lord, and that we would see those things that you would want us to see. And I ask that you would speak to us, Lord, and that you would deal with us, Father. 
And as you speak, Lord, our ears would become unstopped and that we would hear and recognize the voice of our great shepherd speaking to us, Lord, and that we would take your word and that we would apply it to our lives and that your word would bear good fruit within each of us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, we come against right now the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. We rebuke this spirit of infirmity. We command it to be bound and cast into the pit of hell in Jesus' name. And we ask, Father, that you would loose your healing virtue to touch our lives, that we would be healed, that we would be made whole body, mind, and spirit in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we loose the spirit of truth tonight, Lord, that truth would triumph in our lives and that we would choose, Lord, to know you better and that you would empower us by your grace, Father, that we would grow and mature spiritually in the name of Jesus. Well, Lord, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Like I said, we've been talking about Christian character, um, and just like we start every week, we'll go ahead and read Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And it says, and this is the King James, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And it's another scripture that we have um, <clears throat> is Hebrews 10 and 36. And this is once again is the King James. And it reads, you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. So... <clears throat> We need, we need to have patience in our lives. God has patience with us, right? Amen. Um, I know he is very long-suffering with me. I know that he is long-suffering even after I have been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. He was long-suffering with me before I was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I appreciate that our Heavenly Father is very loving and he's compassionate towards us. And that he, he knows that we are flesh and blood. <laughs> Thank God. Um, so when we speak about the aspect of long suffering, we are actually referring to patience. So when we're talking about long suffering, we're talking about patience. The Bible gives several different definitions for patience. So we have a few. Uh, looks like we have three different um, Greek words that I probably I probably won't correctly pronounce, but we'll give it a try. The first um, the first one's uh, macrothumio or macrothumio. Uh, which is talking about having patience to be of long spirit, to not lose heart, to persevere patiently and bravely in enduring misfortunes and troubles. Anybody show sign you know your hands? Do you have any trouble in your life, misfortune in your life? Um, we need to be patient. We need to be long suffering. To be patient, bearing the offenses and injuries of others. Anybody out there ever been offended by somebody? Anybody? ever been offended by, you know, co-workers and neighbors and, and family and friends. We've been offended by all kinds of different people. Um, <laughs> to be mild and slow in avenging. <laughs> to be long-suffering, slow to anger, slow to punish. This is the most widely used definition in the New Testament. And we can find different uh, readings of this in Luke 8 and 15. Maybe you look, take these down, uh, Romans 5 and 4, Colossians 1 and 11, and there's a few other verses. I want to read Romans 5 and 3, which says, um, no, that's not, the, yep, I'm sorry, I got it over here. Romans 5 and 3, and it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So we know, we've learned of, of you know, probably last month by from from now that that grace teaches us things in our lives, and here we're learning that that knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So, and we know that, uh, and I'm probably going to jump ahead to some of these notes. Um, that that each one of these aspects of the fruit of the spirit is building off of the one before it. Is building off those ones that are before it, and know that when you have tribulation in your life. It's just another opportunity for God to work patience in our lives. It's just another opportunity for God to work long suffering in our lives. Do we, you know, we pray the prayer, Lord, put me on your potter's wheel, Father. Shape me with your hands, Lord. And he's going to, he's going to allow different things to come into our lives. He's going to allow different trials. He's going to allow, you know, the tribulation. He's going to allow the the misfortunes, the um 
you know, but he's once again, it's, he's saying, you know, don't lose heart. Be of long spirit. Be patient. Be patient with yourself. Another Greek word here we got, hupomone, or, or hupomone, or uh, H-U-P-O-M-O-N-E. And it's talking about patience in respect to, to things, steadfastness, constancy, endurance. So we need to endure. We need to en be able to endure each other. We need to be able to put up with each other, right? We need. I've got to put up with myself at times where sometimes I just can't stand who I am, right? Patiently and steadfastly, a patient, steadfast waiting for, a patient enduring, sustaining, perseverance. We've ne we need to persevere. We, um, you know, be, be steadfast. This usage found in Matthew, you know, can be found in Matthew 18 and 26, Matthew 18 and 29, and James 5 and 7 reads, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. And so, behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth. So, you know, in waiting for those, those maybe we plant some seeds and we're pr trying to grow a garden. We there's there's things we we need to do. We need to work the ground. We need to uh, you know, we need to cultivate the ground, and we need you know we plant the seeds. We need to water and do things like that. And we've got to be patient in waiting for that thing to grow, for that thing to break forth through the ground and come up and and start you know pressing up towards the towards the sky we've got to be patient in this and we've got to be patient in our own lives in our own walk with god we've got to be patient in the you know in uh being a part of the body of christ and having patience and long suffering with those that are coming to the lord around us or even you know those you know we got things that go on in our workplaces we got things that go on around us that we need to be long suffering in you know and take these things to prayer and believe that god can have his way in this crazy world that we're living in today that he can be have his way in the different things that we're facing each day and i've just got to be patient with these things i've just got to be patient also with myself and i've got to be long suffering with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Um, so yes, just as the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the uh, the third, like I said, we had a couple different Greek words. We're going to go macro, macrothumia. And this is talking about patience in respect to persons. This might be one of the hardest ones uh, for some of us having, you know, patience towards others. This is the word that long suffering in the fruit of the spirit is derived from. Patience, endurance, constancy, steadfastness, perseverance, forbearance, long suffering, slowness in avenging wrongs. Maybe I'll say that one again. Well, here's a forbearance for one. We need to be able to we got to be we need to forbear one another. We need to, and what we heard about that a few weeks ago was we need to be able to put up with one another. I've got to be able to put up with, you know, some of the things that, you know, of other people's lives, right? Some of those things were just like, oh my goodness, this is just getting, 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 getting me, you know? This is just bothering me so greatly, but I need to, first of all, we need to take these things to prayer. And once again, we need to, you know, allow the fruit of the Spirit to be at work in our lives. Amen? And slowness in avenging wrongs. When somebody does us wrong, I don't have to... My first thing should be to, first of all, wait. Be slow, you know, be slow to anger. Be slow to speak, right? Amen? Because our tongue... A lot of times our, we're going to... You know, we got that knee-jerk reaction. Somebody does something to us, we have that knee-jerk reaction. And we we want to lash out. We First of all, we need to... Mm, just take a few moments, step back, pause, take a pause. <laughs> um, and so this is referred to in Hebrews 6 and 12. And also in James 5 and 10. And from these we can see that what is required is not just patience, but extreme patience. And Hebrews 6 and 12 reads, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So we've, 
And we've, um, those that have waited, those that have had the patience, that long suffering, waiting for those promises. And I know that the Lord has made promises to some of us, right? And that promise might have been a few days ago. That promise might have been a few months ago, whatever it might have been. It might have been years that the Lord has made promises to us. And I'm sure that in most of our lives that it's been those promises that it's been years ago, you know, um, that these that the Lord has made these promises. And we're just like, when are these things going to come to pass in our lives, Lord? And this is where, you know, he's he's teaching us something, that, that his grace is is teaching us some things. And that it's like I said, it's just another opportunity. Father, thank you for this. Thank you, Lord. And help me by your grace. Empower me by your grace because I cannot do this on my own. Empower me by your grace to be able to receive everything that you have for me. By your grace, Lord, that I would receive the instruction, that I would receive any guidance that you have for me. And as you're shaping me and molding me with your hand, Father, I surrender my will to you. I step under your authority now, Lord. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to lean upon you because you are my hope. You are the author and the finisher of our salvation, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Help me to keep my eyes stayed upon you, Lord. Keep my heart and my mind fixed upon you, Father, in the name of Jesus. So what's talking about here, extreme, you know, like I said, it says that we must have that extreme patience. Extreme goes beyond where normal and logical ends. Reasons why patience is hard to develop. Amen. I see some of you are agreeing with uh, our long-suffering teaching tonight. Reasons why patience is hard to develop. First of all, patience is contrary to our culture, right? We live in a fast-paced, I want it now society. You know, we, I feel, I feel that. I want, I want it now. <laughs> um, you know, it needs to be right here, right now. This needs to be done. This needs to be ready. This needs to be taken care of. So daily we feel the pressure in the home in the morning on the freeway at the job. This deadline and that deadline back on the free, freeway rush through dinner, hurry to church and social activities, fall exhausted into bed, and get up and do it all over again the next day. Amen? So, and what has happened is the advancement of technology has created in us a lack of patience. So we have this lack of patience because everything is at our fingertips. Every, we could, every, you know, you... I'm hungry now, I need something now. I can just pop something in the microwave and it could be done right now. You know, we have... Uh, fast food we go to the drive through and you know well, most of the places aren't too fast anymore though um so it takes a little bit longer for us to get our food sometimes um but you know you don't have to wait for we don't want to wait for a whole meal to be cooked we want things now we want it now i've got to have this now i've got to have something quick i've got to you know because what you know i got to rush here i got to rush there i've got to rush the, to this place I, you know um i got to do all this stuff before the sun goes down i've got to do all this before you know bedtime starts getting earlier and earlier the older i get right um praise god uh secondly patience goes against our human nature so it's against our culture it's against our human nature thirdly there are roots uh, of pride selfishness and anger that can choke patience out of our life so we have we got to deal with pride we've got to deal with our selfishness we've got to deal with our anger and these are all things that we can go to the Lord about. We can all lay these things down at the Lord's feet. We, Lord, I lay my pride down. I pray that you would bless me, Lord, that you would bless me with, with the character and the nature of Christ, that you would bless me with the humility of Christ. Lord, I leave this selfishness at your feet tonight, Lord, and I pray that you would allow me to take on the love of God, that perfect love of God in the name of Jesus. And by your grace, Lord, that I let go of any resentment, I let go of the anger, I let go of frustrations, Father. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that you would empower me by your grace, Father, to be able to... Um, that I would not hold on to grudges, that I would not harbor any bitterness in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, take this anger from me in the name of the Lord, that these things would not choke out the patience in our lives in Jesus' name. Because we that's what happens. You know, we get um, our pride, you know, we get affected and we, you know, we... Uh, we get affected, we get hurt, we get offended, you know, and then we um, we want to hold grudges, we want to harbor this these things, we want to we want to hold on to this anger, 
We don't want to give these things to the Lord because of our selfishness. I, no, I want to hold on to this, Lord. I don't want to forgive. I'm not going to forget this. This person hurt, you know, this, this hurt me. This offended me. I'm not going to get over this. You know, and we have all this anger. We have all this pride. We have all this selfishness. We, we won't want to let go of these things. We want to hold on. Um, in Song of Solomon 2 and 15, and this is what it was talking about. This is the little foxes that spoil the vines. Luke 2, 21 and 19, in your patience, possess ye your souls. When we allow these things to take the patience out of our lives, we endanger, we're endangering our salvation. We're endangering all those things, all the goodness that God has instilled within us. We're endangering, you know, all those things that God is doing in our lives, helping us to grow and mature spiritually, leading us down the path of his salvation that salvation plan that he has set before us, the one that salvation plan that he has revealed to us, but yet our pride, our selfishness, and our anger are going to be some of these things that that uh, and lacking this this long suffering and not allowing the fruit of the spirit to be manifest in our lives, we're going, we're 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 endangering our own salvation, and we are looking at the the source of whatever is causing this hurt whatever is causing this pain whatever is causing this tribulation and what and it might even be to where where we know that the lord is trying to do something in our lives where we're just like i just can't do this anymore i just can't take this anymore i just can't take this season anymore i just can't take this trial anymore i just can't take this tribulation anymore and we have a grudge against god now and we're not long suffering with god anymore and we lose patience with ourselves. We lose long suffering with ourselves. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord. Praise God. We need patience in three areas of our life. We need to have patience with ourselves. We've got to have patience with ourselves. We're, we're, we're a work in progress. It, progress. It's a day-to-day -day thing. You know, whenever we ask the Lord, Lord, Father, would you put me on your potter's wheel, Lord? Shape me with your hand. Once again, you know, as we, we are that lump of clay on that wheel and he's shaping us and molding us. And he, it's not going to, nothing, it's not just going to come out perfect. You know, when we've prayed that prayer one time, it's just, it, we're not going to wake up the next day perfect. We're not going to, you know, walk through each moment of the day perfectly. We're going to mess up and he's going to have to, okay, here we go. We got to. Now we got to take this and we got to push push over here a little bit more. We've got to smooth this edge over here a little bit better. So we need to have that patience in our in our with ourselves. And one aspect of the fruit built, like I said, one aspect of the fruit builds upon another. So we need to consider that kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness flow out of patience. In other words, it would be a struggle to be any of those without the aspect of patience in our lives. So, you know, like, and what are we talking about? If we go back to Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and we're at long suffering. And I'm not saying that the love, the joy, and the peace has been perfected in us because it's, it's like I said, it's a daily thing. It's a daily walk with the Lord. But, you know, if we could have some sort of foundation of love, joy, and peace, and we can say, okay, Father, let, and he starts building with that long suffering on us, and we we have that long suffering because we've we've experienced the love of God, we've experienced the joy of the Lord, we've experienced the perfect peace of God, and in all these things, you know, with the love, the joy, and the peace, and now he's allowing us to to face, you know, maybe it's greater trials, maybe it's greater tribulation, maybe it's greater uh, hardship that we've ever faced before. But if we have that foundation of love, peace, and joy, we can, you know, we can just trust in God that he's going to get us through these things. He's going to make a way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Colossians 3 and 12, it says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly, beloved, dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience so we could clothe ourselves each day with these things you know we take uh, lord 
you know, I know I talked about this before when we're dealing with a uh, dealing with a depression. And we, Lord, would you take this take this the the gar this garment of heaviness from me, Father? And I pray, Lord, for your peace and that you would help us, Lord, that we would put on a garment of praise and that you would anoint anoint us with the oil of gladness today, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus. And we could pray each day that we, Father, would you clothe us, clothe us with your compassion, Father. Clothe, clothe us, Father, with your kindness and, and your humility and your gentleness and your long-suffering, your patience, Father, today in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, would you impart unto us the very character and the nature of Christ? Would you impart unto us, Father, the, the, the purity of Christ, the, in, the integrity of Christ in the name of Jesus? Father, clothe us with your long-suffering in the name of Jesus. And I've, and I, and as I think about, you know, being clothed in these things, to where I'm being clothed in these things that I am covered with his compassion and kindness and his, his, his humility and his gentleness and his patience. When I'm, I'm covered in these things, but being clothed in these things also to where people see the clothes that I'm wearing. People see that I have, I have my, you know, when I'm at work, people see that I have my, my tennis shoes on. They see that I have my jeans on. They see that I have on, maybe I have on a polo shirt or maybe I have on a sweatshirt. But the, the people, I'm clothed in, clothed in these things of the Lord. And I believe that the word that he uses these things for specific, there's specific reasons when he's talking about clothe yourself in these things that, that I'm covered in these things. But also, too, that these things can be made known, that these things can be manifest and seen by those around us. That were clothed in his, his, his compassion. That were clothed in a garment of praise in the name of Jesus. Praise God. That we would put on him. You know, when we hear about putting on him each day. I've got to put on the armor of God for my protection. Hallelujah. The scripture instructs us to how we are to clothe our lives in the spirit. Praise God. Luke 8 and 15. And this is a King James reading. It says, but that, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it. And bring forth fruit with patience. The fruit of the Spirit. You know, when we you know we at, we read the Word and we study the Word and we we pray that the Word is that we you know Lord help us that we would apply it to our lives that Your Word would bear good fruit within us. There's got to be patience with that. There's got to be long suffering in that. Like it says, we we pray the prayers and we you know. These things, the Lord starts working in us, and we we're gonna fail. We maybe we fail. Maybe we. It seems like it's just taking longer than what we had planned, and what we had hoped, or what we even had faith for. But once again, we've got to have patience with ourselves. We've got to have patience with God. We've got to have patience in that process of 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 growing and maturing spiritually. Having heart. Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. When we have prepared our hearts to receive the word, as good ground receives seed, it will take patience to see the harvest come to pass. So like I said, it's going to it's gonna take time to where we can see that harvest come to pass. This harvest is in our own lives. It is a harvest of those things that are necessary to spiritual maturity. So these things are necessary. So we can't just give up. We just can't throw in the towel. We've got to allow, uh, you know, allow the Lord to, to have that time to work in us. Thank you, Jesus. If we get frustrated with ourselves in the process, then the, then the seed never takes root and, it's, and it will die. We've got to allow that time and space for the Lord to work in us. We've got to allow that time and space for his word to, to work in us so we can have that fruit of the spirit manifest in our lives and yes if, if you know every day like i put on the, the armor of god you know lord that i would be clothed 
in your long suffering, Father, that I would be clothed, Father, in your patience in the name of Jesus. Since God is patient with us, we need to be patient with ourselves. The process that is at work in our lives will not be completed overnight, so we need to be patient with ourselves. Be patient with yourself. Give yourself give yourself some time and space. Let God let him let him have that work. Let him complete that work. Let him perfect that work within us. This is no way means that we should be complacent. That's not saying we shouldn't, you know, we should just sit and wait like a bump on a log. No, we need to be at work. We need to you know, continually cultivate and work on a, our relationships with the Lord. Cultivate and work on those relationships with those around us. And, you know, don't run from those different times where, you know, the Lord's allowing something to happen. He's allowing something to be stirred up to where he's, okay, here. Here's where I want, you know, a good time, a good opportunity for the fruit of the Spirit to be manifest within you. Not just for you, but for those around you to be able to witness this, to be able to see these things. We must be accepting of who we are while we are strive while also striving to improve upon who we are. So yes, we're we're waiting for the, the work to be done within us and um we're we're working towards it. We're not giving up, we're not being complacent, we're striving towards that, we're move pressing on towards the mark, amen. Having patience with ourselves will bring maturity into our walk with God. James 1 and 4, it says, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So let patience have her perfect work. Let, like I said, let that work of the Spirit, just give time and place for the work to be done within us. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Understanding that, here we go, understanding that God is in control of your life will help you to become more patient with yourself. Recognizing, Lord, you're in control. Heavenly Father, everything is under your feet. Lord, and I'm going to trust in you. you are, once again, you're my hope. Lord, I believe that, you know, I've prayed and I believe that you are prayer answering God. And I know, Father, that you are for me and not against me. And whatever you're allowing to come my way, Father, I know that you can give me the victory in and through this. And I'm going to give you praise and thanks in and for all things in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Philippians 1 and 6 it reads, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God didn't start the process in you to let you fail at this point. So he's not, God hasn't just started it and then walked, turned away and left you where you are by yourself. If you will be patient and trust him, he will complete any and every work that he has begun in us. Amen. He's, he's going to complete the work. Once again, if God has made promises, he's going to fulfill those promises. He's not a, our Lord and God. He's not a, any, he's not a liar. Without patience with ourselves, we will not receive the reward. Hebrews 12 and 1, Paul the Apostle said it like this, Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews 6 and 12, That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. And there it is, faith and patience. They inherit the promise in faith and patience. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of, I'm sorry, but I just want to, if we could just take a moment. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to, this prayer, prayer request just popped up. So why don't we just take a moment and just pray for um, baby um, Esten, Sister Vanessa, Sister Crystal. Sister um, Crystal has had some seizures and baby Esten has been sick. So if you don't mind, why not a perfect time to just, um, bring these prayer requests to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we bring to you, Sister uh, Sister Vanessa, Sister Crystal, we lift up baby Easton right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for your perfect will and your way to be done. Father, we ask, Lord, not our will, but your will be done. Lord, would you loose your healing virtue to go and touch these individuals, to touch these souls tonight, Lord, that they would be healed, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that their faith in you would not fail. 
We ask that you would uh, perform the miraculous in their lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would fill their hearts and minds with your peace, that they would be overcome by your perfect love right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we plead the blood of Jesus over them to protect them, Father. We ask that you would dispatch your angels, Lord, to go and minister unto them, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to be able to reach out to you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, that we can call upon your wonderful name. Another chance that we have, Lord, to, to express our faith, Lord, to, to exercise our faith in you as a healer, as a comforter, as the one true God that sits upon the throne alone, the one true God that can hear our prayers and answer prayers, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we lift up those that are part of the body of Christ. We lift up those that are in earshot right now, Lord, if they are in need of a healing, if they are in need of a miracle tonight, Lord, if they are in need of, of receiving and renewing and refreshing, we ask, Father, hallelujah, that your will be done. We ask for your spirit to be poured out upon all flesh in the wonderful name of Jesus. We pray for those souls, Lord, to be renewed and refreshed in your spirit tonight, Lord. Spring up, O oh well, in the name of Jesus, that those rivers of living water would flow right now, Father. We come against all the doubt. We come against any unbelief right now. And we speak faith right now for faith to be manifest in the name of Jesus. That those that are in, 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 in hearing right now, Lord, that their faith in you would not fail. That they would have faith in you for the impossible. Because nothing is impossible with you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you thanks we honor you tonight, Lord. All glory and honor and power belong to you, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 10 and 36, it says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For we, we, we have need of patience. We need to have patience with others. Praise God. And I think we're just going to pick up the next time. And we'll kind of just finish out about patience, um, starting with the patience for others. Um, yeah, so we'll just do that. We'll pick up the next time with patience for others. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, if we could just continue in prayer for a moment. Lord, we, uh, we bless you and exalt you tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. We thank you, Lord, that we have that opportunity to call upon you, Lord. We are grateful to you tonight, Lord. And we believe, Father that you are the one true God. I believe that you are my heavenly Father in the, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we speak to those mountains. We speak to those mountains that they would be removed into the sea in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, that you would make those crooked places straight, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those when it seems like there is no way possible, Lord, that you would make a way for them, Father, and that they would continue to hope in you, that they would continue to trust in you, that they would continue, Father, to lean upon you, Lord, in that wonderful name of Jesus. Lord, if there is someone that is choosing to try to give up right now, Lord, that they would not, that they would continue to press on, that they would continue continue to persevere that they would they would be blessed father but they would be clothed with your long suffering tonight lord that they would be steadfast in their walk with you lord that they would not give up father that they would by faith and by long suffering that they would continue to press on father that they would receive that promise father that they would inherit those things from you lord that you have ordained for them father in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. 
Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for ministering to us tonight, Lord. We ask that your ministering angels would be sent to each of our homes, Lord, to continue to minister to us, O oh Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus. And once again, that we would be empowered by your grace, Father. Hallelujah. To be able to make it through those different trials, through those different seasons, through those different hardships and tribulations, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless y'all. God loves y'all. God bless you tonight in Jesus' name.